Oh, Sonny Dykes. Who doesn't love them? Some Sonny Dykes. Great coach moving over in his first year. Uh, he did the thing last year. Unreal. Second year right here. Um, and uh, they, he was 13 and 2 last year, 9 and 0 in the conference. 30 and 20 is his record. Uh, overall, 6 0 at home, 6 and 0, six and 0 away. And uh, he brings back three on offense, seven on defense. Had to dig in that transfer reporter for 13 to help out with that returning three. What you got on Kansas State, Big Raggedy? Man, uh, you mean TCU? <laughs> TCU, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm that's sorry. right. But what this team did last year was unbelievable. That's as simple as that. I mean, they lose Dugan, they lose Miller, they lose uh, De Mercado, Quentin Johnson, Darius Davis. You know, they lose some big pieces on offense. I mean, it's there's no, it's, it's not going to be a joke. Three on offense are coming back, and a lot of the big talent is, is gone. But what Dykes did with that team, you know, to get to, you know, to get to the uh, playoff, a lot of people questioned it. But you know what? They answered the bell because they took Michigan down, right? And then, of course, when they got to the big game, you know, runner up. So runner up is. And my book is, you know, my hat's off to what uh, Dykes did. You know, undefeated in a conference play, he just, he just, uh, he, he knocked everybody's dicks in the dirt last year. So he's going to be up against it this year f- for sure. He does get the uh, offensive coordinator Garrett Riley from Clemson to kind of help him put the pieces back together. But you know, what, what, a, what a job this guy did last year with this team, and uh, they definitely overachieved a little bit. But you know, well deserved, well played. My hat's off to Sonny Dykes and what he accomplished last year. Now this year is going to be a little bit different, so we'll have to we're going to have to have to keep a close eye on things. A lot of moving parts and pieces here going forward for this team. Well, the first one is replacing Degnan, and uh, they have Chandler Morris now. Chandler Morris has a great resume and um, doesn't look bad, and he, then he gets Trey Sanders at the running back. Um, I mean, who doesn't love a running back from Alabama? But um, He's slacking in the line a little bit. You know, it, it's going to be by committee on offense till we really see who's a real star. Now, if this guy, Chandler Morris, comes out as a stud, I'm sure the rest of the team can rise to the occasion and bring back that energy from last year. But yeah. if this guy is anything uh, mediocre or less, then they'll probably be a struggle year for them. Yeah, I mean, like I say, you know, there's a lot of plug-and-play pieces – Hit the tra- uh, transfer portal hard. A couple of Alabama players coming on board. A new coach on, on the OC side. So yeah, I mean it just it's just and then, and they pick up uh, Richardson from Oklahoma State also on on the wide receiver slot. So you know I think they'll be coached up. You know, but you know how quick is it to put it together on the field? That's what remains to be seen. So we'll see what happens there on the offensive side. Now, on the defensive side, it shows a different story here. I mean, they have a three-man front. They lost a few pieces. But in the three-man front, what we're learning as we're moving forward is that nose tackle um, position is everything. A a good guy at the nose tackle kind of controls the flow of of what teams can do uh, up front as far as running the ball in the uh, A and B gaps. But um, they do return uh, nose tackle Demois Williams. He's the long return starter, but it's okay. They added some great talent around him. The linebackers in the secondary returned some great t- talent and experience. It should be okay. So I think I have a little more faith in the defense, leveling up more than the offense. But the defensive numbers, despite them going so far, didn't look that great. And we all know this TT, even Sonny Dyke said it last year. He said it was the greatest group of players that he's ever coached. Like they all get it, you know, one sound, one band. And they did their thing. It's hard to replicate that. I mean, I don't think we've ever seen that type of energy um, go back to back. I mean, we've seen teams go back to back that were just great teams that, um, you know, had great players and and plugged in new players. But a team that was just all off of emotion and playing together, just a natural strong game, they're kind of like one in a million. So I don't know uh, where to place this team for this year. You know what's crazy? Like um, Tomlinson coached that team forever, and he put he put some of the greatest defenses on the football field. I say great, you know, in conference and and and, and the school history, you know, overall. And it, and what he came in to kind of flip the script a little bit with the offense because TCU wasn't known for their big offense; they were like always a defensive team. And like you say, he flipped the script. So the, 
I don't think they put the emphasis on the defense, but they were competitive enough in that division, that league, to win. Um, and, you know, they're going to have to fill some some shoes here too. But I think uh, – and that's where it's going to – it's going a lot of it's going to fall on the defensive side this year. I, I truly believe that, especially in this conference. Uh, so um, whether they – if they just fall off a little bit on the offensive side, you know, a score here, a score there. They were dominating in, in Ws. Some of the games, if you go back and look at the scores – which I haven't done that yet, but you know they were high-scoring games. You know they won a uh, couple one-score games. You know a few one-score games, a couple double-digit wins for this team against uh, out of conference and, and lesser competition. But in conference, you know you get down to a score or two, it's going to make a big difference uh, on the on the uh, offensive side. So they're going to have to keep the defense tight. And uh, I think junior linebacker Johnny Hodges and uh, Jamoy Hodge. So you got Hodges and Hodges. You know, senior, junior, and then they got four starters back in the secondary. So I look for them to kind of, you know, tighten things up on the defensive side a little bit and uh, kind of pick up where the offense left off and just try to stay competitive. We'll see what the win season total is. When you put it up on the screen, we'll see if we agree upon this or not. Let's go for the season total. So the the books are not afraid. They got them at a seven and a half. That shows a down year here um, to uh, returning playoff team from last year. But it could make plenty of sense because they have a weird stretch in the schedule where they have to play Texas Tech at Texas Tech, which has been known to be dangerous. Then they have to play Texas, Baylor, and Oklahoma all in a row. You know, so that could be a tough part of the season. Um, you know, if things don't get fired off like they like it, that part could make or break them. So I, I, if I had to make a bet, I'm going to say under. But um, – I don't know. Seven and a half is a low number, almost disrespectful, just like you said with um, Kansas State. But what do you think, Big Red? Yeah, I mean, here, here we go again. We talked Kansas. We talked uh, Kansas State uh, divisional champs. Now we get TCU sneaking to the national champion scene, and and they take it all the way to the top, basically. So, did we disrespect them with the seven and a half? Well, you know, they did lose a ton. You know, where Kansas State not as much. So. It's so all about replenishment, reloading. I wouldn't say reloading, but you know, just trying to, you know, get make things happen in a positive way. So, at a, not out of disrespect, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say under this year because last year was just too magical for this team the way they pull things off. And uh, don't forget their first game September second. They're gonna be facing Coach Prime, so there's gonna be a big spotlight on that game too. So that's a game we want to tune in and see how this team does. Two first uh, – that's going to be Dion's first game, opening up against TCU. Yeah. So that'll, that'll be an interesting look. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. I don't know what we take away from that game, you know, being a, he's a first-year coach too. Then they play Nichols and Houston and then SMU, West Virginia. So they, I, I they tell you right now – I tell you right now on this show, September 2nd, Colorado, TCU, under. Yeah, okay. Take that to the bait. There you go. Let's jump into the next squad.